Okay, so the kitchen is done and now we're going to dust. So you literally need just a drop of dish soap and we're going to fill it up with some water. We're not going to fill it up like mopping, which requires more water. We're just going to fill it up a few inches up the bucket so you've got enough to rinse your cloth out. That being said, if it is an initial clean, you will want to change that water out a lot more often because obviously things are going to be a lot dirtier, a lot more buildup, and your water will get dirtier a lot quicker. This bucket is now ready for dusting. There's actually a line on our bucket right here. This is the perfect amount of water you're going to use for dusting purposes. Now we're off to the races. Alex, we've cleaned the kitchen and now we're going to follow that two-step rule. What does that mean? Two-step rule means that you will be wiping something every two steps. If you have taken more steps than that without cleaning something, you're doing it wrong. So Alex is starting, she's got the baseboards. One thing you're gonna to wanna to pay attention here is people are eating around this table, guess what? There's splatters on the baseboards. There could be splatters on the walls. So when you're doing that baseboard and you're cleaning that light socket, you wanna watch for that. We've got artwork on the wall. You need to do the top and the bottoms of the frames. Another two steps, you're at a window. At the window, you need to make sure that you're dusting all of the window sills. Don't leave any crusties behind. But this is also your opportunity to take a look at the actual window. Are there fingerprints there? Is it something that you need to wipe off? As you can see, Alex always has a cotton cloth with her while dusting to be able to take care of those little spots that you know are gonna happen. We've got pets, we've got kids, we've got filthy animals going on. So another couple of steps, there's another window. Let's take care of that. Another two steps, you're gonna find yourself at a glass door. The glass door itself could be done with your squeegee, but the biggest thing you wanna pay attention to here are your handles and that locking mechanism. That's the high touch point. That's where people are touching. And again, remember when you're squeegeeing, you're never going to have it completely perfect. There's always going to be water and a couple of dribbles. And that's why, again, you have your cotton cloth there ready to get anything that needs to be dried off to make sure that glass is sparkling. And look at this, another two steps. You've got some baseboard action, but you also have a light switch. Pay attention to the light switch. What's on there? Look at what you're doing. It's not clean until it's clean. You can't just wipe it and expect it to be done. Look at the task at hand. We are not going to worry about baseboards behind furniture such as this couch. We're not yanking furniture away from the walls in a classic clean. Those baseboards will let, be left untouched until the client wishes them to be cleaned. We've got more window cells. So again, you guys can see this two-step rule really is the rule. Every two steps Alex is taking, there is something to clean, something to wipe, fingerprints to pay attention to. And what's great too, and again, uh, for an efficiency purpose, we're climbing over the couch to reach those window sills. You're not gonna wanna fluff the cushions and fold the blankets until you're actually done climbing on it. Then you can worry about that. You also may wanna pay attention to the legs of the couch. Sometimes these can be shiny and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they stay shiny. Again, think, you're sitting on the couch. Oh, I dropped my coffee, I spilled it. People will tend to clean up spills, but what they're not seeing are the spots that we have to pay attention to, like those legs of furniture. We've got an entire lamp fixture. We've got a light socket in which the dust gathers on the top, so we're gonna take care of that. Now, as you can tell, to fit in that corner, Alex had to move that small table. That's fine, it's light, it's very easily moved. If something is easily moved, we want you to move it. Again, I don't expect anyone to be picking up 50 pounds worth of furniture, but if something can be slid out of the way for you to get under it, it must be done. Again, if you don't know, and that word or that sentence pops up in your mind, what do you do? You call HQ and we will let you know. 
Use your discretion on whether it needs to be wet and then dried. Some things only need to be dry dusted. And we pick up every single item to clean underneath. Now for a mantle, of course, we're always doing the top of the mantle and a lot of times you're going to see more items, uh, decorative items on top of the mantle than just one vase, which again, you pick it up, you dust it, you put it back down, you dust that surface that it's sitting on, but also pay attention to the actual mantle. People are always leaning against it, touching it, so you're going to see fingerprints and who knows what else. So make sure that is cleaned with your damp cloth and then dried. The fireplace in this instance actually has a mesh covering. You might just want to give it a quick little wipe. Make sure that dust isn't building up. If it is glass, there will be fingerprints on it. So let's make sure we take care of that as well. So again, two step rule. You're done the mantle. Now we've got a picture frame. Now we've got baseboards. We've got furniture. We have an end table, a lamp. We have another light switch to deal with. So all of these areas are going to be cleaned. As you can see, Alex is dusting the surfaces of the items and then dusting the actual table. Sometimes that happens. Don't worry. And the reason for this, again, if you think about it, you're going top to bottom. You are dusting the items on top of the table and then dusting the table. The reason for this is because a dry cloth only is not going to remove any drink rings, fingerprints, etc. So that damp cloth is going to rub those out, clean those off. And then you're going to go and collect anything that's left behind and polish those surfaces with the dry cloth. The reason why we use a damp cloth is that dampness is actually going to remove drink rings, fingerprints, stuck on food. The dry cloth is not going to do that. The dry cloth is then used to remove anything left behind by that damp cloth and to just make sure that you get a nice polished finish. When you have furniture like this, we're trying to figure out everyone what it's called. I can't remember, but this kind of pillowed surface, you're going to want to get in there. It collects crumbs and whatnot. If it's really bad, that's when the vacuum comes out. So at this point, Alex has completed the perimeter of the room, just like every room is supposed to be done. And now you finish off with the center. Any trays or any materials that you think will scratch the surface need to be physically lifted, not pulled, not slid around the surface. We don't want to scratch anyone's furniture. I also want you to be aware of, again, this coffee table in particular has quite the frame on it. And those frames will actually collect dust. They get spilled on. So you will actually have to wipe those as well. Alex is using her damp cloth first. Again, a coffee table is going to be covered with drink rings, crumbs, sticky fingers. You're using that damp cloth and then drying to polish. Another important reason we dry the surfaces is that if you leave surfaces wet, they actually can damage the furniture. The moisture dries it out and removes the finish. So you must ensure that every surface has been dried completely. I want to reiterate the top to bottom so that you're not doing anything lower than the top height as you don't want to have to remove crumbs yet again. Okay, this uh, water, as you can see, it's already getting quite dirty. This is on the brink of being changed. Like we don't want to be dusting surfaces with dirty water. What's the point? Now we're just moving dirt from one place to another. So at this point, you're going to want to switch out your water. This should happen probably level by level. In a classic clean, one level, you'll have this. And then when you go upstairs, you're going to want a new fresh water. 
Okay, so the living room's done and now we're headed following that perimeter of the property of the home. And we are just following along the wall, making sure that we're getting every little bit. Again, the two step rule, you take two steps, it's there. Now on these banisters, again, it's a high touch point. You're gonna wanna use that damp cloth. There's gonna be a lot of fingerprints to remove and then you're gonna dry it. Following the perimeter, I can't stress this enough, ensures that you're not gonna miss anything. If you're crisscrossing everywhere, I guarantee you half the house won't be cleaned. So we're just going to keep following that wall and doing the center of the room. So now we've got the main entrance area. You're gonna watch those doorknobs and around those high touch points of how people live in their home. Alex, can you point out around the handle and then also the framing of the door right there around the handle, that is the place you're going to want to watch for. If your cloths are getting too damp, if your cloths are getting too dusty, too dirty, switch them out guys. That's why you've got a full bag. And again, this is a good time. That two-step rule really allows you to pay attention to where people are touching the walls. This is people coming home, throwing down their backpacks. Think about how people live. They're taking their shoes off. Maybe some splatter of some mud has gone onto the wall when they chuck their shoes against the baseboard. Really keep that in mind because it's going to show you where to look for the dirt. Remember on the windows, we're always using our cotton cloth to dry to make sure that we're not leaving any little microfibers behind. And then as you can see, the front door gets messy. People are grabbing onto it. They're touching it. They have, they have, they have yet to come into their home and wash their hands from the outside. This is why you're going to get more buildup around there. So just make sure to pay attention to those areas. So that two step rule is really keeping us in line, ensuring that we haven't left anything behind. It's also the most efficient way to move through the home. So you're, you're taking as few steps as you possibly can to get this home shining bright. Just remember guys too, when you're drying these surfaces, they aren't glass or mirrors. They do not have to be bone dry, like desert dry. We wanna wipe that excess water, but you don't have to stand there for a half an hour drying the surface. Give it a wipe and move on. Okay, we've moved just to the right of the front door. There is the home office. So again, we're gonna pay attention to those high touch points on the doors. And we are again, following that perimeter of the room, leaving that center desk for the end, following that two-step rule. Again, you've got wall art, you've got wall sockets. We've got some built-in cabinetry. Do we dust all of the items on the shelf? Absolutely. Are we going to worry about that very top shelf for the classic clean? No, we are not. We're going to fling our cloth up there and get as much as we can, but we're gonna focus on the things that are within our reach. Please remember, again, to lift that item up, dust the actual item, dust the surface, and then place it back gently and place it back neatly. We don't want to scratch anyone's shelving, furniture, etc. You move from top to bottom always. Now again, we're using a damp cloth and a dry cloth, but honestly, some of those higher shelves, people put something on there for decor and they don't touch it ever again. You're not worried about drink spills and fingerprints in those areas. And nine times out of 10, you will just be able to use your dry cloth. Once you get into the shelves though, that people are, it's within reach, People are touching them, they're placing drinks on them, you've got pets, you've got kids. That's where that damp cloth is going to come into play again and you're going to want to use that and then of course to dry it off. We don't have to worry about being completely bone dry like a mirror or glass, but it certainly has to be dried upon wiping. Another thing to watch out for as well, when you have books like that, if you put that on a surface, that is wet, it will actually stick to it. And then when someone goes to remove it, it will rip the book and part of the book will still be left on the shelf. We really don't want that happening. 
So make sure it's nice and dry before placing that book back down. That also goes for any paper product. So if it was a box of Kleenex, for instance, you'd have the same problem. So again, Alex is just going along shelf by shelf, lifting everything off and making sure it is dust free. She is not dragging any item, but lifting each item. And again, all of these little bits, guys, a classic clean, we're here all the time. You don't have to stand there for a half an hour polishing each, each item of decor. If you're maintaining that and letting the cloth do the work every two weeks, it's going to be perfect every time. The initial clean, on the other hand, yes, we have to spend more time on each item because of course it has been built up over a long period of time. Make sure that when you are dusting, you're placing items back neatly and in the same position that our client has them in. Don't rearrange their home. There's nothing that could be more annoying. So now we're finished that bottom shelf. Alex is going to complete the rest of the room, the baseboard, the socket, the door, the picture frames, and then she's going to tackle the desk or whatever is in the center of the room. So for a desk, what you're going to want to do, you want to remove things that are in your way you don't have to remove everything, but if you remove just even two items, suddenly it seems a lot easier to tackle because things aren't in your way, you're not knocking things over, etc. Just keep in mind of where those things came from so you can put them back exactly where they were. So as you can see, Alex is not worried about, oh, I'm knocking these books over, I'm gonna, there, you know, it just makes it so much more awkward. If she just removes them from the desk, she can actually move efficiently and with ease instead of trying to do something with too much stuff on it. This actually makes the job a lot faster and that's what we're looking for. You get a great job except done in half the time. Now that she's done, she can easily put the things that were blocking her way, put it back neatly and again, the way it was found and man, did that just save her so much trouble. This concept is actually going to be utilized in the bathroom. It could be utilized in the kitchen as well. Just removing a couple of items out of your way is just going to simplify your life so much. And again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call HQ. Alex has now left the office. She's getting the door frame and now we're moving again, following the wall of the home. So you're always going to watch for those fingerprints all around the light switch. And as you will notice, every two steps of this hallway, there is a light switch. There is a socket. There is artwork on the wall. There is always something to dust and there is always something to clean. Watch out for these pocket doors, everyone. They need to be done. So if they are not visible, you need to pull them out and make sure you treat them like any other door because there are fingerprints on them. Well, you'll also notice when you're cleaning that half bath, that door is actually gonna have a lot more drips on it because people are washing their hands and not necessarily drying their hands completely. And now we're finishing this last part of this hallway as you recognize as the other side. So now you can see that you recognize this hallway except now we're on the other side of it because we've been following the perimeter of this whole home. When you're dusting the picture frames, be sure to hold the frame. You don't want to just be dusting it and it fly off the wall for whatever reason. So make sure you're paying attention to things like this. We don't want to damage anyone's home. So again, working top to bottom, your picture frames, your light sockets, all the way down to that air vent. Use a dry dusting cloth on that air vent to get the dust off. Otherwise it will be a big gross mess. If there are spills, mud, dog remnants, then yes, use your wet cloth, get those drips off, but otherwise your dry dusting cloth will suffice. Don't be afraid of screens that are touch screens. Do a quick little damp wipe and a dry wipe to make sure that the fingerprints are removed. So now as you can see, we are now headed back to the kitchen where we first began. And we know that every single area of this home has been dusted. Well done. <laughs>